Hi everyone, my name is Amanda and welcome to my channel. For this week's video, I'll be showing you all my Inktober drawings from the first week of October. The theme I decided to go with this year is quite loose in general, but overall I called it Monsters and Nature. Really, I wanted to do something different and make some slightly darker pieces than I usually do. So I'm continuing the creepy vibe I had going on in my October bullet journal video. First drawing was sort of me getting into the theme and testing out where I wanted to go with it. You'll see later that I used more shading, but I like doing the very delicate and detailed line work. My main focus this year is not to get better at any specific skill or technique, but rather to practice getting stuff done and sharing it, regardless if I love it or not. Like so many others, I have a tendency to only share the work I'm proud of and not everything else. During the course of this challenge, there is bound to be drawings that I absolutely hate and never want to see the light of day. So my challenge is posting a picture anyway and just getting my stuff out there. Terrifying thought, to be honest, but I think it'll be helpful for me to practice that. For day two, I drew this troll-looking fellow with mushrooms all over him. Poor guy. It's quite fun to make up stories about these monsters and where they live and what they do. This troll lives in a cave in the deep woods. When he doesn't sleep, he walks around looking for mushrooms to eat, preferably the poisonous ones. Sadly, all the other creatures are scared of him because they think he'll eat them. But if they got to know him, they'd find out that he's not only a vegetarian, but he's great at charades. As you can see, I experimented a bit with something that is not a fine liner. I used some black India ink and water to darken up the background and make the trolls stand out even more. To create the gradient effect, I watered the ink down with a lot of water. I'll link all the materials in the video. I'll link all the materials in this video in the description box down below if you want to know the exact brands I use. And even though I have a bunch of different colored inks that I never use, I still decided to use only black ink this month. I think it's easier to have a consistent look to all the drawings this way. I decided to name each piece, and I don't really know why, but for consistency's sake I guess I'll keep doing it. They're not especially meaningful or important to understand the drawings, it's just typically the first word that pops up in my head when I look at the piece. I guess it's like the opposite of a prompt. Make the drawing and then find a vaguely fitting name to go with it. Moving on to day three, I think I may have been the one inspiration because I follow the theme very literally. The face on this tree is very much inspired by an artist I recently discovered. His name is John Ken and he does these awesome creepy drawings on post-it notes. The line work on the tree here took forever, but it was kind of therapeutic in a way. Going into this month, I had all the usual doubts about being able to make it through or even have the time to draw a finished piece every day. I do have a full-time job and I have to plan my time very precisely in order to make everything work, but I'm really enjoying the process. The act of drawing is in itself a way for me to de-stress and just completely zone out to some music. So I don't feel like this is work or anything. I think of it more like having a very high maintenance hobby. The more I delve into it, the more I want to do. My only major concern this month is that I'm going on a vacation to Italy next week and I'm not sure if I can draw all the drawings ahead of time. That would be optimal as I don't especially feel like dragging all of my filming equipment to Italy and back. I guess I'll find that out. I added some shading to the tree by going over the areas again with a thicker fine liner. I use a .05 fine liner for the bulk of the drawings.
the drawing for day four was pretty simple, and honestly, I didn't love it. The composition is a bit weird, but oh well. I think I had a conversation with my mom, and she suggested drawing a zombie-like thing with something growing out of its mouth, and I may have taken it to somewhat of an extreme. I don't even know what the story behind this thing is, but that doesn't exactly look comfortable. Moving on to day 5, I actually really like the concept for this one. I don't know how I came up with this, but I had lots of time that day to make lots of details. The biggest challenges this month has actually been coming up with concepts for new monsters. I think the sketching and research phase for each drawing takes longer than the actual inking does. This monster is a giant that lives in the mountains. It gets a little lonely, so he spends most of his time talking to his friends, the trees. He's a little sad though, because every time he wants to talk to a tree, he sits on all the other ones around it. And that's of course a little unfortunate. His diet mainly consists of boulders and smaller rocks. After shading the piece with some watered down ink, I added a few more trees and last details to the surroundings. This next piece was inspired by a conversation I had about the Loch Ness Monster for some reason. I wanted to make a uh, even more terrifying version of that. I swear this is what I imagine is under me every time I go swimming in a lake with muddy water and something touches my ankle. It is literally the worst feeling ever. Go off on a complete tangent. One time when I was small, I had gone sailing with my dad and he flipped the tiny sailboat on purpose. I was probably 10 and I remember having to swim to shore and on top of this already traumatizing and surprising event, a piece of seaweed wrapped itself around my ankle and the water was super deep so I couldn't reach the bottom. Luckily, I was wearing a life vest whilst totally freaking out in the water. Maybe this drawing is a pretty accurate representation of how I feel about swimming in lakes. Again, I used a fine liner for the most part of this drawing, and I did darken some of the shadows with a brush and some ink and water. For this last drawing, I have no idea what's going on. It's probably the weirdest monster yet. It's this centipede looking thing with faces all the way down the back. <laughs> Compared to its surroundings, this thing is massive and wow, I'm just realizing now how horrifying it would be if this actually existed. It would have a tough time eating anything now that I think about it, since all its many mouths are on the back. Well, good thing it's just a product of my imagination and not evolution. Well, thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you want to keep up with my Inktober drawings on a more daily basis, check out my Instagram where I have actually managed to post every day for a week now. If you have any creepy monster ideas, feel free to write a comment, and otherwise I'll see you with another Inktober update video next week. Bye!